So in this video, I'll be talking about the three different types of accounts. Uh, there is the taxable, uh, pre-tax, and post-tax. Uh, think of the pre-tax as 401ks or traditional IRAs, and think of the post-tax as Roth IRAs or uh, Roth 401k. And I think the best way to think about all of these is think of them as like a vehicle almost, or like a car. So we do have three different uh, vehicles at, the, at this point, where it's taxable, pre-tax, and post-tax. And vehicles, like think of it as a car, and you are going through the journey of investing. And uh, the things that you put into the car are uh, ETFs, mutual funds, stocks, bonds. Those are things, the things that you are more familiar with. Uh, and so these are the different vehicles uh, it will go through. And the checkpoints, think of it as like a toll gate where some vehicles uh, don't need to pay. Some people in personal finance communities uh, love uh, retirement accounts uh, for the right reasons, obviously, where you could actually avoid paying taxes. Uh, and so in this case, uh, we have taxable, pre-tax, and post-tax. And on the top are the different checkpoints uh, of uh, where you pay taxes. And so there's three different checkpoints where it's a contribution, a while investing, and then the withdrawal. Uh, and so the money that comes into the account, uh, the money that stays in the account, and the money that leaves the account. So just because you want to invest in stocks doesn't, does not mean you need to invest in taxable. Uh, or just because you want to do index funds does not mean you only can do uh, post-tax or pre-tax. Um, the, the things that go into the vehicles could differ. Uh, however, it's just that the vehicle is different. Let's go more into the taxable account. The taxable account, uh, anything that's related to Robinhood. Robinhood only has taxable accounts. And taxable means that it just is not required for retirement. So there's no age limit, there's no income limit. Uh, it's just you just put your money in and money out whenever you, you like. Uh, but there are a lot of downsides to it, which is why a lot of people start investing into uh, any account uh, and they put the taxable accounts at the last priority uh, because uh, they want to try to avoid paying taxes in different vehicles first. And then once that has maxed out, they're able to put it into taxable accounts. Uh, so in, in this case, you actually get taxed uh, in your contribution because let's say for when you uh, get an income, and you pay for things. All those things that you're paying post-tax are already taxed. Uh, so let's say you work uh, and you make $100 a week. That $100 is already taxed at that point, maybe $280, and you're able to use the $80 to pay for things. And so $80 is the amount that you're able to put in, not the $100 you technically made. Uncle Sam will come after you if you don't. And um, there is actually while being invested. So actually, you, you do pay taxes uh, when you put your money into Robinhood or taxable accounts, and that is through dividends. And this is this is not including any kind of fees that you'd be paying per trade or for management fees. Uh, and so taxable is only to related to the government, while any kind of fees will be related to uh, your broker or. Um, that will be a Fidelity, uh, Vanguard, anyone who might be managing your funds or your stocks. There's only two ways to be taxed. And one is through dividends that you'll be getting uh, quarterly or monthly in basis. Uh, and this, uh, this will come in as almost an income. Uh, the second way is when you sell the stock. Uh, if you make gains on them, you would have to pay a capital gain tax on that. With those two different ways to, of being taxed, uh, while investing will be more related to dividends, while being withdrawal is more related to um, the capital gains tax. And so in this case, taxable is flexible in terms of timing, but it's not great when it comes to avoiding uh, these tolls of to avoid paying taxes. So in this case, you actually pay the most. Uh, you pay your taxes, like let's say 20%, and then you pay uh, when it comes to dividends, I can really it could range anywhere from a zero to 20% and then get taxed again at the withdrawal. So before we dive into the next portion of pre-tax, I wanna dive into pre-tax and post-tax. These are more related to long-term and they do have a lot of different limits in terms of when you can contribute or how much you contribute. 
as well as like when and how much you could take out. And that is the downside of it, but the upside is the fact that you're able to avoid paying some of these taxes. So I'll dive into that right now, uh, but uh, this is great because as you compare it with taxable accounts, taxable accounts are always taxed in each point. However, you do see that at some points uh, you're avoiding. Uh, when it comes to pre-tax, you actually don't need to pay your income tax on that amount that you put into it. Uh, now you want, let's say you put in $100 on here on taxable, you actually can only pay, uh, you could put in $80 in there because uh, you are essentially getting taxed. If you are putting $100, you're actually technically putting in $120, $130 depending on your tax rate. But when it comes to your pre-tax account, you're actually putting the amount that you're putting in before your job. So I do want to clarify right here, it's not getting taxed. And so what does that mean? So up here, taxed here means dividends. Okay. And then capital gains tax. These two actually come in here for both of these, where as opposed to the two here that's getting taxed, uh, both are not getting taxed for either or. So these are the earnings that are not getting taxed. So you might be asking, what is getting taxed at this point then, if it's not capital gain tax? And that is the amount that you're actually withdrawing. I'm just gonna add some numbers because it might help in terms of understanding what that really means. But let's say we want to put in a thousand dollars in here. And in this case, let's say while investing, it grew to five times the amount of a thousand. So what we have here in this case is five thousand dollars. Okay, so this a thousand dollars has been growing five thousand. And so this amount that's growing by will not be taxed at any point, even if it's dividends or at capital gains tax. And so now let's say we, we, we are in retirement and we want to take out that $5,000 and we draw it. And let's say we tax the whole amount of $5,000. Obviously, uh, you won't take the whole nest egg out. But let's say in this case, you want to take the whole thing out at the income tax rate that you are in. And so in this case, let's say it's 20%, all right? So 20% of 5,000, you'll be coming out with 4,000. And this will be pretty much taxing uh, everything that has grown, but you're only getting taxed once. While as opposed to taxable accounts, you're getting taxed at every point. Now, this is the cool part where, so theoretically, pre-tax and post-tax should come out the same if you have the same tax rate as well as the same growth rate. And so in this case, we have five times of growth. We have five times of growth. Let, let's say we put the same thousand dollars and have it at the same tax rate and, and the same growth. So five times this, so five times that, and then we also are getting taxed at 20%. Let's say we want to put the same thousand dollars into this, but because this didn't get taxed, this is supposed to get taxed in this case. So because of that, 20% of a thousand that you try to put in will come out to actually 800. You're only able to put in the $800 that you put in. And let's say it's got the same kind of growth, uh, five times that. And so let's say we actually have four thousand dollars of growth now we we want to take the same scenario and we want to take out everything that we have again that's obviously not usually the case but in this hypothetical situation let's say we take all of that money out we take that four thousand dollars but because this is not taxed then you come out with four thousand dollars that you actually had it grown by if you compare both the pre-tax and post-tax if the tax rate and the growth rate are both the same, theoretically, they should come out the same. Uh, as you can see, 4,000 and 4,000 here. Uh, I'm gonna take out the parentheses. Usually parentheses in accounting means negative. You're not coming out with a negative, uh, you're coming out with a positive 4,000. Uh, imagine you get in debt actually because of that. But basically, even though this is not the same amount, and this is not the same amount, at the end it comes the same amount because you're just getting taxed 
differently and the growth is the same. So it seems like everything is great, both pre-tax and post-tax. So let's kind of compare this number with taxable count. Um, the numbers will be will differ a little bit, uh, but we'll, we'll kind of play with it a little bit. So let's say we first want to put the same thousand dollars we want it. We wanted to put in these two, and, but because it's getting taxed, you could only put eight hundred dollars. And let's say you want to start having that grow uh, at five times that, but because it's getting taxed, um, this is not exact math in this case because we're only taxing uh, taxing the dividends. Okay, so in terms of growth, uh, let's say we want to stick with the five times the amount that it has that uh, that grows by, and let's say dividends account for half of that. Just in terms of the hypothetical situation, let's say twenty percent of the growth comes from dividends. So in that case, it will be um, dividends will be accounting for the two point five times that, and let's say it's getting taxed at twenty percent. So we got to take out 20% of 2.5 is 0.5, right? And so in this case, we still keep the capital growth gains uh, from that. So let's say the capital growth gain accounts for the other 2.5. Uh, this is the original uh, five times that, uh, and this, we're just taking that half out. Uh, and so this will grow by 4.5 times rather than five times uh, because of the tax uh, from the dividends. So what we want to do is we want to do 800 times 4.5. And what we have is $3,600. We do want to do a quick number check. So because this got taxed just like the post tax, but because it got taxed again at 0.5, uh, we have 3,600 here while we have 4,000 here. So there is a little bit of difference uh, with the pre-tax, obviously it's 5,000 because it hasn't gotten taxed yet, uh, but it will get taxed in a bit. Let's say for the capital gains tax. And so with the capital gains tax, uh, I am simplifying a little bit in this case, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that difference, 3,600, and then subtract the 800. What we're gonna, what we're gonna have it's 2,000 and... Well, and what we're gonna have is 2,800. And so in that case, um, what we need to do is tax this amount and just keep the 800. And so if we are taxing this at 20%, like we mentioned, uh, this will be 0.8. So what we have here is the 2,800, that was a difference, that's the growth of it, multiply by the 0.2, so in this case, what we want to do is 0.8, which is the amount that you will have after it's taxed. And then after that, what we want to do is add the 800 that was originally invested earlier on into this to get the total amount that you could keep. And that would, and then that would come out to around 800. That would come out to $3,040. Right. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit just so that it comes out it's a little bit easier to visualize. So even though we have the same stock that's growing at the same rate and we put the same amount of money in there, it still comes out a little bit different. So taxable comes out at the end $3,040 while pre-tax and post-tax comes each come out to around $4,000. So with any kind of investments that you have, you do want to max out as much as you can with pre-tax and post-tax just to get that savings going because in this small amount of a thousand dollars we're putting in uh, it comes out to a thousand dollars that we save and obviously this will compound as it grows more and more uh, and then the difference will be more drastically different so uh, even though taxable accounts are great that's flexible and that you're able to do a lot with it it's really hard to beat out um, the avoidance of taxes because the, the fact that this the difference of this is a thousand dollars that it would have to grow more or you have to put in more to just try to match your retirement because getting taxed ta getting taxed around, at around 20 percent is a lot obviously there are cases where you might be able to pay zero percent uh, in your in your dividends or your capital gains tax but 
in most cases when you when you are getting taxed around 10 to 20 percent uh, that does make a huge difference at the end of how much money you have at the end i know this is a little bit different from other videos i've been making uh, but I thought this will be a fun way to just kind of just try to simplify some of these investing terms and these accounts uh, because it is a lot easier to visualize when you see all of them laying side to side and how they might be. So obviously for me, I like uh, retirement accounts because you're able to avoid uh, those taxes. So if, I, if I were to choose one of these three accounts, uh, I like the Roth IRA because for me, when it comes to uh, seeing my account, I see that $4,000 is every debt I have right now and will not be taxed. While when you see a traditional IRA or 401k at the end of in the middle, in the middle where it's pre-tax, then this money has to get taxed. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I try to simplify as much as possible. Uh, I think this is something that's really important to understand when it comes to investing, because obviously when you try to open a brokerage account or retirement account, you can kind, of, kind of know the difference, uh, but I think I would love to build on this, uh, build on this concept of retirement accounts and taxable accounts and try to use this uh, as a way to um, build a foundation uh, to go into more, a little bit more advanced topics. Uh, but if you are able to understand this, I think this is a good grasp of um, the basics. But I think this is a huge concept to understand because everything that you learn when it comes to investing will go on top of this. Uh, and so hopefully future topics will be like this. But if you like the video, please uh, smash that like button. It helps the channel out a lot. Uh, and if you want to look at future videos like this, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Thanks guys.